Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to HRO and Aston Martin Reading, I'm bringing you an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of this 2019 Aston Martin Vantage. HRO and Aston Martin Reading have this, as well as many other high-spec models in stock at the time of publishing, and you can find all of their contact details in the description of the video. The Vantage name has been with Aston Martin since it was first used in 1951 on a high-performance variant of the DB2. Since that time, the Vantage name has been used to signify higher-performance versions of different Aston models, but it became more prominent in the 1970s when it was tied to the Aston Martin V8, a car known by many as Britain's first supercar. Before being applied to this latest model, the Vantage name was also applied to a version of the Virage-based V8 born in the 1990s, variants of the DB7 and the previous Vantage model that began its life in 2005. The previous model helped to solidify the Vantage as a model in its own right and became Aston Martin's best-selling car ever. This latest version comes with quite a radical design overhaul, in addition to a new powertrain, new aerodynamics and a modernised interior and I will focus on all of these features throughout the video. The new Vantage is formed from a lightweight bonded aluminium with steel panels, a process that has been carried over from the DB11 and helps to ensure balance, rigidity and weight efficiency over the previous car. It is finished here in Hyper Red and comes in at 4,465mm long, 80mm longer, 2,153mm wide including the mirrors, 1,273mm high, 13mm taller and also has a dry weight of 1530kg. Before we can view the engine bay, we first need to unlatch the bonnet by pulling the red lever found to the left of the passenger's footwell. Then moving around to the front, a small catch needs to be unlatched before we can lift the bonnet up where it can be self-supported on two struts. The new Vantage shares its Mercedes-Benz derived engine, a front mid-mounted 4.0-litre twin-turbo V8 with a few 63 AMG models. The engine itself is set quite far back into the chassis and so the new Vantage can be classed as front mid-engined which helps to facilitate the car's 50-50 weight distribution. Its new engine produces 503 brake horsepower and 685 Nm of torque. This output produces a 0-62 mph or 100km per hour time of 3.6 seconds and a top speed of 195mph. Before we move away from the engine bay, I'll highlight an interesting air induction feature. Cool air is fed through the front top intakes into this channel that then directs it into the bonnet mounted funnel where it's deflected off the heat shield seen behind and down directly into the turbos. Once finished in the engine bay, we can close the bonnet with a firm depress. This car is sitting on the optional lighter weight 20 inch front and rear forged alloys finished in dark texture. These are one of nine options, and the centre caps can also come in gloss and satin finished carbon fibre. Braking is provided by front and rear ventilated discs, 400mm at the front and 360mm at the rear. A carbon ceramic option is also available. Stability comes from front double wishbones with coil springs and an anti-roll bar. A multi-link setup, coil springs and anti-roll bar at the rear, and skyhook enabled adaptive dampers. There's also a dynamic stability control system, adaptive torque vectoring system, and a new electronic differential that can go from 100% locked to open in only a few milliseconds. All of these systems help to make the car feel more composed and capable in the streets as well as the corners. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the in-depth exterior tour from front to back. The redesigned front starts with an extended gloss black splitter below. This can also be specced in carbon. The separated air intake sections in the previous model have been joined as one here, but of course keep the iconic Aston Martin styling along the top. Behind the now enlarged grille, we find radiators and intercoolers and sensors for the car's standard front parking sensors. Moving up, we find the new ultra-slim LED daytime running and adaptive main beams. The daytime running lights come in a feather design, with feathering manufactured into the light housing itself. The bonnet behind has a much smoother design than before, but as we saw earlier, the central power dome is both functional, as it assists with air induction, and offers an aggressive aesthetic, with additional dynamic lines on either side. It is also possible to spec lateral bonnet vents here. Moving back, the roof panel is also sculpted more dynamically, with ridges on either side. This can also come in body colour, gloss black as seen here, or gloss carbon. The new extended gloss black side skirts below now appear to be individual components, rather than integrated as in the previous model. The small side air release vents of the previous model have been enlarged into these new side gills that help to release greater amounts of pressure from the front wheel arches. They can be finished in body colour as seen here, perforated matte black or carbon with lubes. The electrically adjustable mirrors on either side now have a far more elegant flowing design than before. These come with small lateral indicators and can also come in body colour and carbon finish. The door handles behind are still integrated into the doors and come with keyless entry, signified by the two strips at the front. Moving back, we find the petrol fuel tank flap around the right rear panel, the opposite side in comparison to the previous model. 
The cap can be opened with a light depress thanks to its spring action. The petrol fuel tank has a capacity of 73 litres, with the car producing a combined MPG of 27.4. Once finished with, the cap can be fixed into position with a light depress. Moving centrally, the rear window is less angular than before, and now complements the flowing yet dynamic aesthetic. At the bottom of this, we find a slightly more prominent ducktail spoiler. The small LED brake light strip that was to the rear of this in the previous model has now been extended out and connects the side light complexes. These now come in one ultra-thin integrated complex on either side, rather than being split by a panel as in the previous car, with the same feathering design as the front lights. The Aston Martin badge is now presented higher at the rear, as the end of the ducktail now signifies the start of the boot lid, with clean text below. Moving down, the reversing camera can still be found just above the rear registration plate. Below, we find some of the biggest aesthetic changes to the Vantage. A new gloss black flowing panel helps to define the diffuser and exhaust areas below. The new diffuser has two dual fin sections on either side of the open central funnel, which will actively contribute to high levels of downforce. And the new valve controlled quad exit exhaust system helps to produce a very different sound. Now we've finished the in-depth exterior tour, we can move inside. The redesigned angular key comes with three buttons, lock, unlock and to open the boot. Once unlocked, the handles can be pushed out and easily grabbed and the swan doors can be opened. Just as with the exterior, the interior of the new Vantage has seen a complete redesign. Here we find the optional sport design pack that includes sport seats and a sport steering wheel, both of which I will cover in more detail later in the video and can be specced individually of each other. The interior in this car is a blend of black Alcantara and obsidian black leather with matching hyper red and dark chrome finished inlays. We can now start the in-depth interior tour with the doors. The Alcantara upholstered top panel now starts with a rounded form and becomes more angular as we move along it, the opposite of that in the previous model. There's a more defined and separate door release, here finished in dark chrome with the speaker now below it. Underneath, we find this new leather upholstered panel with hyper red inlays and firm leather upholstered door handle and controls for the boot, windows and mirrors ahead. At the bottom of the doors, we see the continuation of the inlay above in addition to an open storage area. Moving inside, the sill is neither high nor wide, so ingress and egress is a very straightforward process. Here we find the standard sill, but aluminium and carbon options are also available. Moving up, we come to the cruise control and exterior light controls, and first manually adjustable air vent. Now sitting in the driver's seat and looking ahead, we find the optional sport steering wheel, which essentially means it's significantly more angular than the standard wheel. It is upholstered here in black leather, but can also come with Alcantara and carbon. On the left, we find controls for volume scroller, adaptive dampers, voice controls, and to end calls. Leather upholstered section centrally with the horn and airbag, and controls for drive mode selector, trip controls, and accept calls to the right. Behind the wheel, we find the elongated gear shift paddles for the car's 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. These have been designed so the driver never has to take their hands off the wheel to change gear. As the new Vantage comes without an emotional control unit and with keyless go, the illuminated button in the central column can be depressed to start the car. Looking ahead, the instrument cluster is now broken into three fully digital screens, from left to right. Fuel level, engine temperature, exterior temperature and damper mode, central rev gauge and speedo, and trip screen to the right. Now focusing on the trip, we start with mileage, then range and real world consumption info, trip from start and trip from reset. Next is navigation, where we find direction of travel, then radio for the car's full DAB digital radio, where all stations can be selected from using the controls to the right of the wheel. Media comes next, where the user can select from connected devices, then telephone for calls and messaging. Service is next, which offers service schedule information and finally settings for assistance systems, instrument cluster settings and factory default. As previously mentioned, all of this can be navigated through using the controls to the right of the wheel. We can also change the driving modes from Sport to Sport Plus and then Track, and also the adaptive dampers. Being able to adjust these separately means the driver can create customised setups for each situation. Moving back, we find a much more angular and dynamic hood over the instruments, with Alcantara extending over the dash, with further speakers and venting on either side. Moving down, we find the new 8-inch LCD screen that comes with the Mercedes-Benz operating system, but with a new Aston Martin user interface. The navigation menu is first, with manual zoom and destination input functionality. 
We then come to the cars for FM, AM and DAB Digital Radio, here with station icons. Media comes next, for media via connected devices through USB, AUX or Bluetooth connections. Then telephone, for Bluetooth hands-free telephony and messaging, where the stored contacts list can also be utilised. Then vehicle, where vehicle settings can be accessed first. Here we find options for acoustic lock feedback, auto mirror folding, auto locking illumination and auto locking and to adjust the brightness of the car's ambient lighting system. Then we come to the 360 degree camera system which can only be accessed when the car is turned on and finally time adjustment settings. Moving down on the main menu screen, we come to System Settings, where the user can adjust language, display, the camera, Wi-Fi hotspot and Bluetooth, then more easily accessible time and date adjustment, and finally to turn the screen off. The central column has been completely redesigned here, losing its waterfall effect, and now starting with two protruding air vents finished in dark chrome, as opposed to the integrated vents in the previous model. Below this, we find a more compact physical button array for optional passenger seat ventilation and heating, passenger zone temperature scroller, Passenger Zone Air Direction, Direct Access for the Infotainment Menu, AC, Passenger Reading Light, Internal Lock, Fan Speed, Rear Demist, Max Front Demist, Unlock, Driver Reading Light, Driver's Air Direction, Driver's Zone Temperature Controls, an optional driver's ventilated and heated seat. The PRND and additional controls now come below from above in the previous model. From left to right, Direct access controls for media, radio, the 360 degree camera, parking sensors, hazard lights, drive settings for park, reverse, engine on off, which glows red when the brake is depressed in preparation for ignition, neutral, drive, SOS calls, traction control on off, stop start on off, and direct access controls for nav and telephone. Below this, we find the new central control pad for the infotainment system that has both touch and manual usability. Taking a closer look, we find the airbag warning light and infotainment volume control to its right multifunctional wheel with return and favourites and the touchpad behind. Moving back, there are two open cup holders presented separately from the storage compartment behind where they were previously located, with this area being upholstered in the optional Alcantara. Moving back, we find a much smaller armrest section number four. This can be easily opened up to reveal a good sized storage compartment with the 12 volt SD and dual USB connectivity. Once finished with, the lid can be easily fixed below. However, this space can also be used to store the premium user manual that provides an in-depth insight into using the new Vantage. Moving back, there's a slightly indented panel just before the rear storage area. On either side, we find the optional Sports Plus seats, here upholstered in the optional Alcantara finish with leather piping and side bolstering. These have been spec'd with the optional 16-way adjustment and memory functionality, with all controls being found to the inside edge of the central column to the respective seat. To move into the rear, we simply need to pull the leather tag found to the outside shoulder of the seats and pull the seats forward. Looking behind, we find quite a large amount of extra storage space. There's a defined shelf that spans the width of the cabin and a small amount behind the seats. Once finished in this area, the seats can be easily fixed back into position using the pull. Now moving outside, we can view the car's remaining storage capacity. The boot can be unlocked using the button we saw earlier or on the key and once unlocked the lid can be easily lifted up and self-supported. The boot itself has a max capacity of 350 litres, 50 litres more than the previous model. Taking a closer look we find the optional luggage set here that comes with smaller and larger bags with options for technical or leather finish. The boot itself has indentations on either side, a shelf centrally and a small accessory pack strapped to the right. Once finished in the back, the boot lid can be easily pulled down using the top or leather strap and fixed below with a firm depress. 
Now moving back inside briefly, we can focus on the car's final few features. The sun visors on either side have been enlarged over the previous model and come with vanity mirrors. Moving centrally, we find the LED reading lights that correspond to the controls in the central column we saw earlier. And moving down, we find the almost seamless auto dimming rearview mirror. So that concludes my in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video for this 2019 Aston Martin Vantage. For any inquiries, you can find all of HRO and Aston Martin Reading's contact details in the description below. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.